and welcome to Hawaii is My Mainland. I'm Rob Kinslow, guest host for Kaui Lucas today. Um, with me today is uh, Kristen Oliveira, a sustainable community systems designer. Welcome to the show, Kristen. Hello, thank you for having me. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? I, I, you know, I met you some years ago and you've like exploded into this new potential and I want you to tell the audience uh, a little bit about who you are and what you're doing. Okay, well, um, I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, moved away for college uh, in San Francisco. Studied uh, sustainable community design, um, interior architecture and design as well. Um, hmm. Where I really blossomed into understanding what I wanted for the future. Oh. Um, and so now I'm back here, at, back at home, working for Kokua Kalihi Valley, um, a nonprofit where I do a bunch of different things. I wear a lot of different hats there. Oh, cool. Can we see slide number one? And we'll talk a little bit about uh, Kristen's uh, projects from her school, and uh, then we'll segue into Kokua Kalihi Valley. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about this image? So, this is. Um, in school, we're always given something to redesign structurally, internally, um, and my designs were basically formed from nature. And so this is a library in Half Moon Bay. Mm -hmm. um, originally, the structure was just a box. And so what I did um, is I took parts of nature and I um, made it into something else that was formed through nature. And so this one was shaped as the gourd. Um, the concept was a gourd because in Half Moon Bay, that's what they produce mostly is pumpkins. Oh, yeah. And so I wanted to use something that is also culturally significant. Um, in many different cultures, people use the gourd as music instruments, as food, mm. carrying, as um, knowledge, um, mm -hmm. to, to prolong knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. And so through this building, I created different spaces through a library. Um, just wanted to bring a different sense of education to, li to a library. And so mm. um, here we have different ways to learn how to farm, aquaponics. Um, we have a apothecary. We have different um, viewings of mm -hmm. media because, you know, kids nowadays, they, they don't really want to open a book. And so um, we have that there. Mm -hmm. um, and this then, is a living library. Yeah, it's a living building. And I so oh. um, it was the water is really filtered throughout the walls. And so um, the, the walls of the library filter the filter, water. Yes, there's wow. the different stages of filtration, wow. um, and it also collects water vapor, um, which produces the energy. So you're collecting rainwater. Collecting rainwater and the, the, the moisture in the air. Wow. It's very. Um, That's really innovative. Yeah. What, what other innovations do, do you think you uh, that, that uh, people in Hawaii might be interested in hearing about uh, from this design? Um, well, this design. There's a lot of things that are going on right now in Hawaii, but um, through this design. I really use the uh, gray and black water treatment, vapor collection, the surrounding filtration through the building. Right. And so um, the water that's collected throughout the building also cools the building oh. and then the living roof systems. And when I was in college, I was... So this is passive cooling, too. Passive cooling, yes. Oh. And um, I was really into um, biofuel and uh -huh. algae and so creating mm -hmm. energy through that. And so underneath the building, there's a place to... Um, to renew energy with biofuel. So it's this wow. whole big concept and ideas that I just like threw everything into. Okay, so uh, the concept is a gourd and then the walls and the structure of the building and even underneath the building serve as sources of energy and water. Mm -hmm. And then tell us about the interior. What? How did you design the interior to be like nature? Um, well, I also, also follow biomimicry and mm -hmm. so to try to look at nature and how it evolves, mm. and so a lot of the wood is, of course, natural wood from there. Yeah. Um, but the paint and the windows, there was something about mercury that um, Janine Benyus was looking at uh -huh. the abalone shell and how they collect energy through the abalone uh -huh. shell. And so, um, oh. my idea was to have um, the sealant on the windows as like solar cells to collect the oh. energy through it. So everything. Every material in there has a purpose. It's not just wow. a chair or a carpet or a wood floor. Um, it's more than that. And so that's kind of where I was thinking in school is that everything has different layers to it. It's not just one. Um, uh, and that's, <coughs> that's uh, a core concept of biomimicry yeah. is to use nature's energy efficiency and, energy and nature's design to create more efficient structures that humans can use mm -hmm. as well. Um, so 
uh, where can you put that image back up again? Let's look at that again. I want to ask some more questions about that. So I see the shape of the gourd in that uh, the you know the curves that you have there. Mm -hmm. So this green area on the right as opposed to the brown area on the left. What is that, that oval egg-looking thing in there? Oh, the egg, so that's a skylight that also, ah, um, skylight. That also acts as a part of the um, collecting the water vapor. And so through that, it brings it down. I don't have a, um, a 3D image of that, but mm -hmm. in that you can, in the building, there's a long, um, a long passageway that you can see the water that's collected in the different steps of the filtration. So it's also not just having that in the building, but also showcasing it so people can understand um, understand that flow of nature and that flow of harvesting uh, natural elements around them. Wow. And so tell me again the school you went to and why um, you chose that school. I went to the Academy of Art University mm. in San Francisco, and I chose that school because um, a lot of the advice I was getting was to leave Hawaii in order to bring something back that wasn't being taught here. Mm. And so um, San Francisco is really innovated. And I moved when I was 22. And so I kind of had more of a sense of what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so um, I feel like going there helped me evolve in, into what I really wanted for Hawaii or what I, how I wanted to contribute to the uh -huh. community and my culture. OK. Um, and um, so Let's talk about, let's segue right into that. How are you contributing to Hawaii at the moment? Um, so right now I work for Kokua Kalihi Valley, which is a nonprofit mm -hmm. um, in Kalihi. And it started in the 70s from, um, we call them super aunties. They went door to door and asked the community what they wanted, like um, what they wanted for health. And they wanted all these different things like elderly care, dental, um, just medical and so mm -hmm. it grew into um, we have now have nine different centers wow. and we have elderly programs nutrition diabetes OBGYN we just we kind wow. of house the encompass um, the encompassing of health and we're the first um, organization health center in Hawaii that has a nature preserve so we have a hundred acre nature preserve in the back of Kalihi Valley wow. that stewards um, land connection to people and health and oh. so um, even that right what you just told me is innovative because you're working from the community first yeah tell us how that and so I when I came back from college I really I was gonna work for a firm but I really wanted to reconnect with the land so I was farming <coughs> for a while and then I did um, harvest management data collection moved into um, budgeting work and I was running the front of a house of our roots cafe and then now I'm our mobile market manager so now I'm in charge of the distributing the accessibility to organic and healthy local food to our community mm -hmm. and so I feel with that I'm learning um, community outreach and how to speak to our communities that really need help and mm -hmm. to help them mm -hmm. and so um, and with that I'm also using my um, the skills I learned in school to do graphic design. So I'm creating a lot of like informational flyers, handouts, recipe cards, yeah. um, banners and different things to um, kind of provide the community with the information they need to sustain healthy lives. Wow, that's really exciting. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's cutting edge innovation. You know, government isn't like surveying its customers to find out what they need yeah. and then providing those services in that way. But yet this private nonprofit is actually filling a need that government at the moment can't fill. So that's yeah. very innovative, I think. Yeah, and so, you know, we're kind of we're kind of really grassroots down in the community and down in our food systems thinking what they need mm -hmm. and how are we gonna connect them back to you know, because in Kalihi people aren't just from Hawaii, they're from Micronesia, they're from Samoa, there's we speak twenty one different dialects in our centers and wow. so um, oh. How do we help them connect to something when they're when they're not home? And yeah. so you know, a lot of Hawaii ho houses people that call it home, but they're from other places. So, yeah. what kind of foods and what kind of things can we provide for them? Can we put up the next image so that we can talk about that uh, image a little bit? Tell us about this mobile market uh, program that you're now the manager of. So yeah, I, I run the mobile market program, and basically, it started off as um, the people in our center. We have we have two different. Um, farmers markets where we double people's EBT and so they give us twenty dollars we give them forty dollars back so they can have accessibility to fruits and vegetables oh, wow. and so this program came about because our staff were able 
and other people weren't able to get the, the vegetables that we were selling. And so we started loading up carts and pushing it around and selling it to our staff. And then it just kind of grew where um, I brought on about seven to 10 new organic farmers. And so we're completely organic now. Before it was, um, it was just local, but now we're completely organic. And What's the purpose of the, why is it mobile and what does it do? Yeah, I mean, so the mobile market, we bring it to um, elementary schools, oh. we bring it to elderly centers, we bring it to resource centers in Kalihi, and so it just kind of provides the accessibility even further. And I also make value added products, so I'll pickle things, I'll make like kalo chunks or kalo paa, different things that people may not know of oh. or have a hard time cooking or just are lazy to cook. I'll provide it for lunch so that they oh. can try that and eat that and then I'll explain the value in it. So it's not just making something, it's actually adding value. Okay, let's put that image back up again and uh, you can point out the different areas of this image and tell us about what it, you know, what you just said. Okay, so emphasize it. Um, the banner on the top is what I've created for um, to let our community know what we have. You know, we, we take EBT, we don't double it, we only double up to five dollars. Mm -hmm. um, we're funded by Aloha Care and SNAP. And then the, the, the carts on the right-hand side, um, that's kind of what we push around in the community. Oh, so you go actually go door to yeah, door? Yeah, no, we don't, not door to door yet, yeah. but we're just going through our, our ah. community center and our comprehensive health center. Ah. Um, and then the le bottom left is me and um, our Ehuola Kiki, which is our um, Hawaiian children's and family program that we also run with Roots. Um, but they were helping me prep for the next picture, which is the senior mobile market at the Gulick Center. Um, that's one of my favorite mobile markets because I'm Filipino and so I get to give back to my community yeah. and my, my culture and so yeah. um, that's their smiling faces. And then the last picture is of Ulu, which yeah. people, the cultures in Kalihi really love and they, mm -hmm. they have a hard time finding it and so I try to bring it to them for an affordable price. Um, Does Kuku Kalihi Valley grow any, uh, grow, I mean they grow all of these vegetables, right? Yeah, we, we grow Everything. a lot of food up at Ho'ulu Aina but Basically, that's to share food. That's to mm -hmm. teach the community how to grow food and how to work with each other. And it's also a place where you connect back to the earth, which connects you back to your health. Yes. And so it's not just huh. um, eating. It's more of a spiritual mm -hmm. experience. So it mm -hmm. really it kind of cleanses you. And we also have a um, Kulua Palena, which is a community garden in KPT or Kohio Park Terrace. And so um, that's where we also are able to show how to grow food for the community. Huh. That's really exciting. I, you know, I was born and raised on a farm, and so to see this evolution of food growing and supply and uh, availability uh, into like a mobile kind of food market mm. and this intergenerational sustenance providing that you guys are doing is just really exciting to me, and it's uh, I'm really thanking you for being involved in this. Yeah, I really love the work that I do, which is why I think that. Um, I've taken a break from actual design mm -hmm. and just been designing for communities and thinking of ways to um, bring apart health, not uh -huh. only in spaces, but in people's lives and their bodies and stuff. Oh. Well, what does that mean to you, uh, bringing health into people's lives? What, what well, do you mean? through food, mm -hmm. like, you know, through food and connection and their family and and really um, letting them understand that the land is there for them. Uh, you know, no matter where, there's land everywhere. You don't have to just be in Hawaii to, to connect to the land. You can be anywhere, but just to appreciate um, what you have growing around you and to be self-sufficient and try not to rely on other things like ships coming with food. <laughs> you know? Yeah, what, what does happen if ships stop coming or if we have a big, big hurricane? Well, I feel like that's what we're teaching the communities to grow for yourself and to to really like rely on your neighbor. So one of our slogans at, at KKV is um, neighbors being neighborly to neighbors. So it's yeah. like if you need something, ask your neighbor. And then if your neighbor needs something, you know, help them out. And so I feel like, um, you know, we teach people how to grow food. And so hopefully they'll take that. But people are busy. So that's where the mobile market and our food hubs come in to like help them get that produce and get that health. Um, do that. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I think we're about ready to take a break, and uh, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit more with you when we come back about uh, the other uh, projects that you're working on and what you actually have for envisioning the future. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire 
all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go! Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I am Rob Kinslow, guest hosting for Cowie Lucas. And today, again, we have with us Kristen Oliveira, who is a young community sustainable systems designer. And she works at Kokua Kalihi Valley, and we've been talking about her projects there. In this next segment, we're going to talk about uh, where she's going in the future and what she would like to uh, you know, create uh, here in Hawaii. Welcome back. Hi. Yeah, good. So can we put up the next image and uh, talk about that? Okay, so this is called Visions for the Future, and it's kind of in a collage of uh, a lot of different features. And uh, I see it's almost utopian, if you would mm -hmm. know that word and uh, understand it. But it's also makes you relax a little bit when you look at it. You go, oh, that's a lovely photo. Uh, what's here and what, what is the potential for our communities that you see? Um, in this photo, I, it's actually in San Francisco. Oh, I was this going is? To, yeah, when I was going to school, I found this photo. Um, it is called Utopian Society, actually. Oh, really? And so, um, I don't know, when you look at this photo, you can really see the land, even though it's a cityscape, it's breathing. It has mm -hmm. um, natural elements everywhere. It's collecting, harvesting um, what nature provides for us. And so, for the future, I really see our earth coming to this or our peoples and our communities believing in this mm -hmm. even though maybe our government may not believe in that i feel like it's in the people's hands um to really care for one another and to care for this earth and so in this photo it you know it shows this beautiful woman out on her balcony um breathing in life and um everyone around her is collecting energy and being happy and there's if you see in the picture there's no cars you know, people are all walking, but you know, people need cars, but in the sense that people are being more reliant on themselves and other things to get to what they need. Um, well, when you move food closer to people and you move energy closer to people where they live, yeah. then perhaps you don't need, and you move jobs into yeah. the home space, perhaps you don't need, uh, you know, so many cars or so many. Yeah, and so there's a lot of ed edible landscaping. Um, you know, where edible landscaping, especially in cities, and I was going, when I was living in San Francisco, they were creating that where they dig up sidewalks and put plants in the ground uh, in order to um, hold the rainwater. So that's what this is, it's two streets that look like they have been dug up and yeah, planted. Yeah, and so, and so what they, there's this one man, Brock Dolman, he runs the Occidental College of Arts in um, Santa Rosa. Mm. His tagline was, slow it, sink it, spread it. And so in uh, order to collect the water, because now water is coming so hard, yeah. that we need to slow it, sink it, and spread it in order, uh, in order for the earth to, um, to soak up that water because water is essential. So I see. What do I see back there? I see. Uh, I see domes pass. I see solar panels. I see food growing on rooftops. Wind turbines. Okay. Uh, what else uh, is in this picture that? I think I I from? actually see now. Um, like these metro are all cars things that we air. could do. Yeah, and they, oh yeah, do. air fl flying cars. Wow, like uh, Jetson stuff. I don't know if it's flying cars. I think it's on cables. Oh, they're on cables, so it's like a cable car. Yeah, thing. cable cars in the air, not in the ground, like San yeah. Francisco's cable cars. And you don't see any utilities lines, so uh, all the energy is generated local. So you, yeah, you know, generated everybody's in its own space. Their own. Yeah. I used to say uh, there's enough energy for all if we all generate energy, mm -hmm. and that's same with food, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that so that that is a really inspirational picture yeah. if you can kind of get past the maybe the reality of today and it's see kind the of a dream tomorrow. world yeah it's kind of like something that I like to envision to keep forward my my dreams and my aspirations because in reality mm -hmm. there's a lot of really crazy things that are going on and yeah. so I feel like if you can keep a higher sense of 
what you want mm -hmm. and a picture that you want, mm -hmm. you'll get there. It may mm -hmm. take different paths or different ways. It may not look like that, but it'll be something like that. I've heard that uh, expressed in, in, a, in a way that really struck me just recently. Uh, one of my teachers was talking and she said, you know, reality focused, focused on the problem is like putting your, installing your windshield in the floor of your car. Mm. And you're saying, I don't need to look up because I'm focused on the reality. Whereas creating a vision is putting the windshield up so you can see where you're going. Why, why would you want to look at the ground instead of looking at the mm -hmm. reality? Why not look at the vision? Mm -hmm. And I think that is borne out by research which shows us that people are not inspired to change by problems. They are inspired to change by visionary ideas. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're kind of trying to do here in Hawaii? Yeah, like paint the picture and mm -hmm. have people understand that different things are possible mm -hmm. um, by showing and doing. And mm -hmm. so you can talk all you want, but it's mostly when you show the community that it's possible mm -hmm. and say like you build a 3D model mm -hmm. and you show that there's this one building, this one structure that can happen mm -hmm. and people believe in that, mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's powerful. And T tell me, what is the importance of models, do you think, in, uh, in envisioning the future? I think models are important to see that, you know, to see the space and to see how people can, can live and dwell in that space mm -hmm. or be a part of that space. And so um, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just really like a vision board to like have a vision about it. Yeah, and same with Honolulu. I think if, if there was some group effort at modeling the future or envisioning the future of Honolulu, uh, you know, with all kind of stakeholders, mm -hmm. we could have, uh, a, you know, an imaginative effect on designers. Yeah, and I think it all depends on who's the stakeholder and who, yeah. what vision is it, because there's people sure. that have a lot of different visions. You know, yeah. there's someone that has, oh, we want all these houses, we want all these buildings, mm -hmm. and that's going to save the world, but it's really not. I feel like the vision is to stop building on ag, ag land yeah. and having that for people to dwell in and to learn and to grow mm -hmm. and then building in the inner cities and mm -hmm. keep that, you know, keep that inhabitant. Compact. And, yeah, compact. And yep. Can we uh, take the next image? Okay, so tell us a little bit about this image. It's, uh, to me, it's, you know, it's soft and it's welcoming and it's uh, a lot of light. Uh, why did you choose this image? So um, I took this image at 6.45 a.m. in the back of Kalihi at Ho'olu Aina when I was farming. Um, and to me, this image is multi-layered. Um, it just doesn't mean a tree with beautiful light in the morning. Um, I, looked at it, I look at it and I see fractals and I see different ways of um, the exploding, exploding of the universe <coughs> and the exploding of mind. And I also... Hmm. On a reality basis, I see um, what I want to do for the future is build, be a part of building natural birthing centers and elder care living, um, community centers, uh, different places where people can learn off of the land. And so this is what Ho'oluan is. It's yeah. for that. Like we have, we have na um, Hawaiian natural birthing program back there too, um, La'o Lapa'au, different things. But that picture really shows um, my vision of the future and how you know, to keep those valleys and the back of the valley sacred so we can hold those spaces for people to heal and for people to be together. There's a lot of research now coming out showing that uh, nature and bathing in nature and uh, uh, going to nature is a wonderful de-stressing and it's a cure for a mm -hmm. lot of stress diseases that are out there. Um, is that part of your vision too? Yeah, it really cleanses the soul. Um, this one lady that comes and volunteers at the whole Lina, she um, had a stroke and she would come there every Thursday on her growing farmer's work day. And the more and more she came, the more and more her stress levels and the more and more her movement in her face and everything oh, wow. else came back to her because she was on that mm -hmm. land and she was working and touching the soil. And I believe that, I strongly believe that in order for ourselves to heal, mm -hmm. we need to have that avenue. And so if we keep building on our ag land, we keep building in the back of the valleys, that's going to be gone for our children mm -hmm. and it'll be ruined. And so um, hmm. people I work with were really strong for, you know, conserving that land and that um, aspect that our culture had long before there was building. Yeah, the web of life is indeed complex and humans are not yet so much aware of 
our role and our uh, part in uh, rebuilding that complexity and, in fact, uh, you know, restoring that complexity based mm -hmm. on the previous 150 years of industrial destruction, really. Um, so I wanted to thank you so much for coming in. I'm, I'm just empowered by uh, all the stories you told and uh, excited that the next generation of designers is, you know, alive and, you know, uh, out there uh, embedded in their communities working for uh, the betterment of our society and mm -hmm. for the restoration of, of nature. And uh, I wanted to thank you for having that heart, that, that soul, that, that light, that uh, you know, ability to speak your truth. Uh, of course, thank you for having me speak that and right. allowing me to speak. Yeah, uh, we need more of you, and uh, I, I hope There's that <laughs> yeah, I hope that you'll uh, you know also take up a teaching role uh, at some point in your life and train the next generation for you because uh, uh, sustainable sustainability will be nothing without that dialogue w within generations that we're having today. Yeah, and uh, I think it's important to think about seven generations, not just yours or your your daughters or your sons. I think it's important to think about their daughters and their sons and and so forth and so. My uh, Native American past says that we should be thinking about the three generations before us and the three generations mm -hmm. after us and then of course with us as the bridge between those mm -hmm. then we got seven. So yeah. that's what you're talking about? Yeah, especially mm -hmm. like listening to our kupuna because without them, without their knowledge, we wouldn't have what we have today oh. and the stories we have today. So well, thank you so much for having that yeah. ability to, of course. to do that. I want to thank you all for joining us today with on Kali Lucas's Hawaii is My Mainland. I'm Rob Kinslow, and we're wrapping up with Krista Oliveira, a sustainable community systems designer. Uh, it was a very lovely talk, and uh, I hope you'll look her up on the web and maybe contact her if you have uh, some designs that you want to do in your community. It's a wrap. <coughs> <laughs>